Good afternoon. Uh, on the outset, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Banzi sir and uh, Dr. Ruttal and Dr. Dharmendra for the opportunity for me to give us something about to discuss something about uh, uh, diabetes management uh, uh, in type 1 diabetes. We all know that uh, uh, even diabetes management is much difficulty and uh, in pregnancy it is much more difficulty. And uh, the, we know there is a difference between uh, new to onset diabetes in pregnancy, which we call it as uh, GDM. And uh, uh, we have a pre gestational diabetes, already a known diabetic, either with type 1 or type 2 marching into pregnancy. My professor used to say that if you don't like a person, particularly a physician and a diabetologist, you can refer him to a type 1 diabetic patient who is going to become pregnant. <laughs> that is a tough job actually, really tough job to manage. Very tough job to manage here. So, with the given 15 minutes, I uh, am going to like to talk, discuss about pre-pregnancy care and uh, what are the lifestyle changes we need to adopt in type 1 diabetes and uh, how we do go with the insulin in uh, type 1 marching into pregnancy. What are the recommendations? How to adjust the dose? And uh, use of technology. Uh, we are in the era of technology. So, how to use a technology in uh, glycemic management and uh, labor and postpartum period? How to manage? So, this is being a case based man uh, discussion. I like to have uh, two cases here. The case number one, uh, she is a 23 years female. Type 1 diabetes for the 9 years, HP1C is 8.4, she is unmarried and planning to get uh, marriage for another 4 months. Another case I do have, uh, case number 2, uh, 25 years primary, 11 weeks of gestation, she is having type 1 diabetes for 14 years, HP1C of 12.7. She is having uh, bilateral proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Already she had undergone a laser treatment for that. And her protein is 2 plus, that is macroproteinuria. She is on uh, uh, ARVs. It is an unplanned pregnancy. So, one type 1 diabetic, uh, 23 years, uh, both are uncontrolled diabetes. One is want to become pregnant. Another lady is already pregnant with all the diabetic complications. Not only uh, retinopathy, she is also having kidney disease as well. So, how to proceed further? Any clue from here, from the audience? Yes, sir. Please sit down and tell us, sir. Since uh, this. Uh in case number one, yes, sir. The entry one C is eight point four. Yes, sir. And is a type one. She is a type one uh, diabetic for the nine years. Yes, sir. And is the age is concerned. Yes, sir. And she is planning for marriage in the four month. Yes, sir. So I would go for this. Uh, if, if the fasting and PPBS is not available here, yes, sir. Or the blood sugar level is not here. That yes, sir. Same with the HbA1c. Yes, sir. So I would say it is uncontrolled diabetes. So in that case, uh, I would initiate uh, this uh, insulin. Already on insulin, being okay. a type 1, she is already on insulin. And, and uh, each uh, that she has to keep her sugars in order before consuming. Yeah, great. That's great. That's great. So, we took upon the case number 1 and we discussed about case number 1, how to proceed further. We call it as preconception care. That is a period uh, we can be able to manage. Why diabetes is most important in pregnancy? It is not only a improve a perinatal outcome, it also prevent long-term mental and fetal outcome. All diabetes uh, at the end of the life only we know whether we have controlled very well or not. Whether the patient developed retinopathy, nephropathy, uh, renal failure, we don't know. At the end of his life only we came to know. But in pregnancy, with the 10 months of tight glycemic control, we can be able to produce a healthy baby. So this is what much important here. So, we want to have a good real challenges as I said previously. So, uh, the real challenge for the diabetologist is, is always a managing a type 1 diabetes in pregnancy. 
despite so many understanding, despite uh, so many knowledge about diabetes and type 1 and pregnancy, still 50 percent of type 1 diabetes pregnancy is having some large gestational age. It is as overall as a uh, global uh, data here. And less than 40 percent of type 1 diabetes receive pre pregnancy care. This is where we are lacking. So, we, 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 we as a diabetologist, as a physician, we have to take care of our pregnant uh, ch uh, children or pregnant women who are planning for pregnancy. Why it is important? We know that risk of all diabetes complications worsens during pregnancy, particularly nephropathy and the retinopathy. And whenever the baseline HP1C is more than 8, it is also associated with preeclampsia. And the one complication which will not worsen during pregnancy is which diabetic complication will not worsen during pregnancy? Sorry, sir. Neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy will not worsen. Retinopathy will worsen. Nephropathy will worsen. And pregnancy also increases the uh, 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 acute coronary syndromes. So that whenever we are talking about preconception care, care that we should educate about uh, birth control, particularly the contraception. Uh, unmarried, uh, no need of going for contraception. Otherwise, if you are married, we are planning for a pregnancy. Uh, uh, instead of going for a pill, progesterone releasing IUDs are much more safer, which is 99.9% .9 efficacy. HP1C has to be a near control. Almost 6.5 is recommended to plan for pregnancy. And ACEs and statin should be stopped. There is no doubt about that. But the latest recommendation uh, from the US FDA that have recommended that those who are very high risk of acute coronary syndromes, that patients can be continued statin. That to be with the common. So we have to be very careful while giving statin in pregnancy. Assessment of complications has to be done pre-conception, particularly retinopathy and microalbuminuria. Whenever the patient is having proliferative retinopathy, we have to treat. Then only we have to allow the patient to become pregnant. And folic acid supplementation obviously should be started. Smoking session and uh, promotion of lifestyle uh, pre we need to educate or promote our patients to reduce at least 10 percent of body weight and we have to assess the thyroid thyroid should be tsh should be less than 2.5 and check for rubella antibody factor also if needed go with vaccine so this patient uh, 23 years uh, female uh, uh, hp on say 8.4 uh, we have started on uh, insulin as part and uh, living by as doctor also pointed out from the water insulin previously on. Basal bolus has been started and the patient have, doesn't have a retinopathy and microalbuminuria. And her TSA, TSH is 1.25 and BP is 108, 78, not on BP medications, not on static. It's a clear cut case. So we can allow them to uh, become pregnant uh, once the HPOC has come down. After three months, the patient came back to us. Uh, marriage is within two weeks. Uh, as part, uh, dosage is 16, 10, 12, and Levimer is 18 units at bedtime. HPOC is 6.4. They are uh, continuing folic acid. PP is 120 by 80. So it's a clear cut case. We can ask her to proceed for uh, pregnancy planning, and uh, we ask her to continue the same. And regular co monitoring has been advised. And whenever the pregnancy become positive, ask the patient to come back. Otherwise, after three months, we ask the patient to review back. And whenever we go with the pregnancy lifestyle, once you become pregnant, we want to go for lifestyle modifications. Lifestyle modification, having said that all type 1 diabetic people should be educated about carbohydrate counting and low glycemic index. All diabetic people, particularly type 1 people, need some carbohydrate because pregnancy is a ketogenic state. So unless we give a carbohydrate, it would not induce ketosis. So weight gain should be based upon the preconception weight, whether it's normal or overweight or obese, depending upon that, we can allow them to go, go for weight gain. And exercise during pregnancy also advocated <coughs> upper body exercise, those patients not able to go with routine regular exercises, upper body exercises we can recommend them. And uh, whenever the patient have a high risk, we can avoid exercises. And glycemic target, uh, targets of uh, pregnancy, we all know that all bodies do recommend that uh, fasting of less than 120, two hour of less than 120, uh, fasting of less than 90, two hour of less than 120, and one hour of less than 140. And there is a recent ADA guidelines which released two days before. They do recommend that hypoglycemia in pregnancies, whenever HPOC less than 70, if you monitor with the sensor, it is less than 63. 
So insulins as of almost uh, human insulin is in the category B and Lispro as part has been recommended. Blue lysine is not approved yet and regular insulin, NPH, insulin dexamer also in the category B. Though insulin class in C, it is probably safe. Uh, also insulin decuder also probably uh, category C, it is also can be used as per the US FDA recommendations. And uh, anti-hypertensive, we can be able to use methyl dopa if one we want to go with ravitalol or uh, nephidipine long acting and hydralazine also can be used and angiotensi converting enzymes and uh, angiotensi 2 receptor blockers should be uh, stopped. Low dose aspirin even though it is not classified whenever the we are think of patient is having some preeclampsia or whenever patient we think of uh, intrauterine uh, growth retardation that time we can go with uh, aspirin and statin should not be used specifically whenever they are very high risk we can go with the statin. So this patient uh, 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 became pregnant and uh, she came back to us with 10 weeks of gestation on his aspart and levima. Her fasting is 86, post frontal is one no need. Is it okay or shall we continue or shall we intervene? Continue. So glycemic control is adequate. What else you want to do? So all post meal sugars will be at least Great sir. So we want to go for six point profile. Six point profile means fasting, post breakfast, pre lunch, post lunch, pre dinner, post dinner. Sometimes eight point. That time we go with the midnight blood sugar also. Her six point profile is fasting is. This is the target value we want to achieve. Her value is 84, 122, 56, 160, 143, 175. Once a patient asks, um, come back after one week with a six point profile. That is, uh, this is her readings. So her uh, post lunch, post dinner is quite high. So we need to adjust the dose according to the sugar levels. We have adjust the dose as uh, and uh, pregnancy is a physiological challenge for the insulogenic response. So this is a normal insulin requirement in a non-pregnant, uh, sorry, non-diabetic adult uh, pregnant mother or woman. Usually the requirement will go start requirement will come down with 12 weeks. And the requirement goes up as a uh, human placenta lactogen levels goes up. The peak reaches 36 weeks, and uh, once the uh, placenta has been uh, separated, sudden drop in the uh, insulin requirement will happen. Pregnancy is a ketogenic state. So, whenever the fasting ketones are positive in a pregnant mother, don't get panic. It is not a diabetic keto acidosis, just adequate diet at the insulin and hydration will recover back. And the usual the insulin requirement will be uh, uh, twice, two times higher in the second trimester. It goes almost uh, three times higher in the third trimester. So the current technologies in type 2 diabetes, uh, we, we are, we are, nowadays we are following continuous glucose monitoring technology. Usually as with type 1 or type 2, the time in range we want to have a more than 70 percentage. For time in range for type 1 and type 2 non-pregnant adult is if you say time and range, it's between 72 and 80. For pregnancy, if you say time and range, the response value is 63 to 140. So in between 63 to 140, we want to have more than 70 percentage. But either particularly in type 1 diabetes, we want to have a 70 percentage time and range. Time below range is 5 percent, time above range is less than 20 percentage. The ADA 2024 recommendation do suggest that the decision whether to use CGM in a pregnant individuals with the diabetes or with the GDM should be individualized based on the treatment regimen, circumstances, preferences and needs. Doesn't mean that all the patients should be exposed to CGM. And uh, the CGM, there are two trials are available. One trial is CONCERT, which is a continuous glucose monitoring in pregnant women with type 1 diabetes. So, so you can able to see the slides here with the CGM. The large part gestational, slide, uh, gestational age babies has been reduced. Neonatal hypoglycemia is, uh, has been reduced. And uh, the hospitalization for the baby has been in ICU, ICU admission has been reduced. And this is a real bad data observational study where uh, which also pointed out that the second trimester and third trimester maintaining climbing range will reduce the uh, large part gestational age. So uh, one word about insulin pump therapy and uh, uh, as we know that uh, the insulin requirement will go up and down frequently in the pregnancy as the hormone levels varies. 
So frequent adjustment of insulin dose will be needed, which is very cumbersome. Many our diabetic patients are not able to follow it up. And whenever the low glucose suspend technology happens, the reborn hypoglycemia, ketidomia is quite common in the pregnant mothers. And usually those patients already on CGM, already on pump, started well in advance before pregnancy can be asked them to continue. And the latest hybrid closed loop system has been advocated, which has been much more promising. So we, we are worried about these complications. Why we want to control diabetes? These are the particular complications. Those pre-gestation diabetes, we are worried about congenital anomalies. To rule out congenital anomalies, we have to submit the patient for fourth chamber echo, particularly the fetal fourth chamber echo, in between the early second trimester. So this early second trimester, we will be able to understand whether the baby can be safe to progress with the pregnancy. Sir, so, only two minutes. Yeah, I'll finish it up. Intrapartum diabetes management with the goal is to maintain 90 to 100 milligrams. Once the placenta has been separated, 50% of preconception insulin is only needed. Don't stop insulin as with GDM, otherwise the patient will develop DKA. So our patient's uh, delivery has been done in 36 weeks, labor natural. Postpartum follow, we need to educate the board and uh, birth control, preconception and psychological support. What about case 2? How to proceed with that? She is having bilateral diabetic retinopathy, protein plus, unplanned pregnancy, HPMC 12.7. So we ask them to continue or terminate? We just educate. The right is not with us. We just counsel them and the decision is there. True. We have to discuss with them and uh, because uh, one, one, only one indication here is proliferative retinopathy. That is the only condition for termination. Uh, even with high sugar, it is not an indication for termination of pregnancy. We have to go for 4 point echo at the early pregnancy, early second trimester. If it is abnormal, then the patient can be taken decision whether to continue pregnancy or terminate. It is not our issue. So this is about the whole plan, pre-pregnancy hair, lifestyle, pharmacological, only with the insulin, psychological support and diabetes technology, wherever we need it, we can go with that. To conclude, glycemic management in type 2 diabetic pregnancy, always challenging. Proper nutrition is important during preconception care and pregnancy. Insulin requirement change throughout the pregnancy. Frequent and close monitoring is essential. As with pre-conception counseling, essential uh, uh, attention has been given for hypertension, retinopathy, nephropathy and other complications should be continued throughout pregnancy. Newer technologies like CGM insulin pumps are emerging and promising one. And holistic approach is necessary for safe uh, for pre-conception. It should be started in the pre-conception. Thank you for your presentation.